We believe in a doctrine called dispensational salvations. What does that mean? Okay, basically there's a lot of people out there who are scared of Bible verses that seem to show you have to do faith and works for salvation and that you can lose your salvation. Our simple answer is this. Those verses are simply applied to a different group of people, different time period. You will either see a passage on faith and works and losing your salvation to Old Testament Jews or tribulation Jews. You're going to see it in different time periods, different group of people. Whereas the Christian church age, we believe that once saved, you're always saved. Amen. We believe that it is saved by faith alone, not a single work involved right there. So this is why we can truly argue faith alone, not by works. Works? No, it's faith alone. Well, there are verses in the Bible that says you have to have works with your faith. You're going to see it over at a different time period, different group of people. That's what you're going to, that's what you're going to notice. That's why... A lot of people, they get rescued from false doctrine <clears throat> and become dispensationalist because one of the number one issues is salvation. That's right. And the, the evidence is the people in our church and the people online. Amen. But there are people out there who hate this doctrine of dispensational salvation. So because they hate this doctrine, they're going to do a dishonest move by getting rid of these boundary lines on salvation and combine it all together and pretend as if it was only faith alone not by works you're not going to do that if you're going to be honest with every verse in the bible there are verses in the bible that really do show about losing salvation and works involved what are you going to do with those verses you can do the alexandrian move like you've always done by interpreting it inserting your interpretation you notice how i've always done leave the verse as it says if there's a verse that says faith not by works, leave it alone. If there's a verse that says faith and works, leave it alone. What's a simple solution to that? Simple. Faith and works, salvation was a different salvation to a different time period, different group of people. Faith not by works for us in the church age. There's your simple answer. So I'm sorry, we're going to put these lines back here. All right, now, we believe that because... P, uh, Jesus Christ did not die on the cross yet, the people were not able to have their sins taken away or cleared fully. They weren't able to have that. So because of that, they went to Abraham's bosom. Now, if you don't believe this, look at Luke 16. Notice in Luke 16, they had to do faith and works for salvation to end up in Abraham's bosom. If you look at Luke chapter 16, but I read it uh, before in my previous video, which I'll put below here, it's concerning about so-called limbo. And I'm going to put the video below over here because I covered it in my previous teaching, which I will not do here. But all you have to do is read verse 28 through 29. Notice, in order not to burn in hell, they had to go by what? M the law and the prophets. Look at that. See, so they had to follow the works of the law in order to escape from hell. Now, the critics out there, they like to use a pretty move. Gene Kim, he gets so excited quoting this passage that he just overlooked the fact that it was merely pointing out the law and the prophets were talking about Jesus died, buried, and resurrected. So because the law and the prophets talked about that, people trusted in the coming Messiah for their salvation not the works of the law for their salvation. That's how they get around that. No. Okay. Look at 2 Kings 17. Old Testament. Look at Old Testament, 2 Kings 17. Look at 2 Kings chapter 17. And notice right here concerning the word of God about the law and the prophets, what the Lord did. They had to... Notice that the law and the prophets had to do with works, you're going to find out. Look at verse 13. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your, what? Evil, Evil ways. ways. That's a work. And keep my, what? Commandments and my statutes. Work. 
according to all the what? Law. law, which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants, the what? Prophet. prophet. Law and prophets has nothing to do with works. Uh, let's look at what Jesus even said. Look at Matthew 7. Now let's look at what Jesus said. Look at Matthew 7. Let's even look at New Testament, huh? You want to play this game? Let's look at Matthew 7. Picking and choosing what you want for what does it mean by Moses and the prophets, law and the prophets. Talking about Jesus died, buried, and resurrected. Here's your problem, man. Here's your problem. The law and the prophets did talk about Jesus died, buried, and resurrected. But where in there did it say that you have to trust in the shed blood of Jesus Christ for your salvation? It only talked about his death, burial, and resurrection. Where you have to put faith what he did on the cross is not mentioned clearly until the apostles and uh, Paul. And that's proven at 1 Peter chapter 1. Many times I quoted that verses. That salvation, the prophets and the Old Testament, they knew about that, but it was not revealed to them. It was revealed to us. Okay, so now let's look at the book of Matthew chapter 7. Now look what the Bible says right here, Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. Does that look like works? Yes. Now look at colon. For this is the what? Law and the prophets. Dig your grave, buddy. What does law and prophets mean? And then they like to pick and choose verses. You want to play that game, man? The definition of law and prophets is works right here. Now... You want to keep playing that game. Let's look at the book of Matthew. Look at Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Verse 37. So notice right here, this has to do with works for salvation. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. How many of you have broken that commandment? Many times. Yeah, we all did, right? We all did, okay? So, verse 38, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. How many times have we broke that law, right? Man, if that was our salvation plan, we'd burn in hell. Thank God that's not our salvation plan because look at verse 40. On these two commandments hang all the what? Law and the prophets. So at, when Abraham told the rich man that for your brothers not to burn in hell, they have the law and the prophets, you know what he's talking about right here. They had to go and follow the Mosaic law the works of the law. That proves that salvation is different from us Christians, whether you like it or not. Now, let's even let's look at Paul, okay? Let's, e let's look at all the verses, what this means, law and prophets, Moses and the prophets, huh? Let's look at the book of Acts chapter 28. Acts chapter 28. Well, it said that they used Moses and the prophets to lead them to Christ. Ah, then this is where we're going to catch you. Look at this, Acts chapter 28, we'll read verse 23, Acts chapter 28, verse 23. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the what? Law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. Oh, see, Paul's talking about right here, faith not by works from Moses and the prophets. Ah, now, look at this now. Look at verse 24. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. Look at verse uh, 28. Be it known, therefore, unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. Ah, now, let me show you another one. Let's look at Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. We're going to look at Acts chapter 13. And notice what Paul uses concerning about Moses and the prophets. You know what you have to do? You have to believe hmm, that Jesus, death, burial, and resurrection. You have to believe in this. Now, let me ask you this question. Old Testament Jews, you'll notice right here, they did not believe in this for their salvation. Peter and the disciples, they said, forbid it, Lord, don't get crucified. They didn't know about this. Old Testament Jews certainly didn't know that. Otherwise, why would they crucify Jesus? See, so you notice right here, they didn't know about this. 
So they would like to argue, well, they believed about a coming Messiah, even though they didn't know the specifics of how he died, buried, and resurrected. Ah, but here's the problem. If you want to use this term, they believed in the law and the prophets talking about a coming Messiah, you have to include his death, burial, and resurrection for that. You can't just say in a coming Messiah. You have to include his death, burial, and resurrection. That's going to be your problem right there. Verse 26, we're going to read verse 26. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. And notice verse 29 talks about his crucifixion. Verse 30 talks about his resurrection. Uh, verse 33 talks about uh, Jesus Christ being resurrected. You also see verse 34 and verse 35, etc. So then, if, they, if Paul was using Moses and the prophets to preach to them, he had to what? He had to mention this. Do you think he only said, a coming Messiah, a coming Messiah, just believe in a coming Messiah? No, the devils even believe and tremble about some Messiah coming. But here's the thing about his death, burial, and resurrection. You, you got to believe in that for your salvation. Right. That's when it's talking about law and prophets used by Paul. Yep. So if in the New Testament, we use law and prophets about faith alone for salvation, it's going to include this, not just the coming Messiah. Mm -hmm. Because here's your, here's the coffin. Here's the nail on the coffin. Look at the last chapter of Luke. Look at the last chapter of Luke. Look at the last chapter of Luke right here. And then we'll read verse 26, verse 26. Here's their problem. This is the proof text used by some uh, anti-dispensational salvation losers. And they'll say, notice right here that Moses and the prophets is simply referring to the coming Messiah and they believe in that for their salvation. That's what Abraham meant when he was at Abraham's bosom. No, he meant the works of the law. If we're going to talk about the coming Messiah in the New Testament, New Testament, not like the Old Testament talk about, the Old Testament, when they say law and prophets, they're talking about the works of the law. If we're going to use that term, Moses and prophet, law and prophets, we're going to include death, burial, and resurrection, not just the coming Messiah. Because look at this one. This is their proof text, and it became their, it became their Achilles heel now. Let's look at verse 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Oh, look at that right here. So this disproves Gene Kim's argument. Ah, but this includes verse 26. Ought not Christ to have what? Suffered, Suffered these things and to enter into his glory. Look at these Old Testament people. They didn't believe in that. But guess what? They believed in a coming Messiah. They believed in a coming Messiah, but they did not believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. Does that mean they weren't saved then? Because look at this, if you don't believe me. Verse 21. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. So look at these. These people believed in a coming Messiah. They trusted and believed in him, but they did not believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. Because look what Jesus said at verse 25. Then he said unto them, O fools, and what? Slow, Slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken about what? Verse 26, his death, burial, and resurrection. Oh, they believed in the coming Messiah, but they didn't believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. Well, here's your problem, man. If we're going to argue faith alone, concerning Moses and the prophets, law and the prophets in the New Testament term, we're going to include this. Yeah, you have to do that. But in the Old Testament, when you looked at this, there are works involved. Ooh, okay, sorry. We believe in dispensational salvation. Now, here's the thing that will solve every argument out there. You ready for this? All right. 
I don't care how many endless videos these loser trolls post online and they hate this church, they attack this ministry. Let's solve the problem for all you onliners. You tell all my critics this like I'm going to do. You know what I do before I pray this teaching? I'm praying this to God. Lord, if the videos I post right now concerning talking about everything that I talked about brings glory to your name and I'm confident at the judgment seat of Christ, then Lord God, if I'm in the wrong, correct me, reprimand me before I hurt more people out there. And you losers can't do that, right? Say that before you post a video with the title criticizing a Bible-believing pastor. I do this with confidence at the judgment seat of Christ. And you judge me harshly, Lord. You correct me, fix me before I hurt other people. You say that. And I want all of you people, I don't care if you're not on my side, you challenge those enemies to do that. See if they have the guts to do it. And then it doesn't matter how well they can argue or they fool you and deceive you you know that their heart already lied to That's you. Right. Boom. <laughs>